Hello and welcome to the Ipswich and East United Reformed Church's online and dial-up worship service. Welcome to you, I'm the Reverend David Rees, leading us all in worship today as later we look at the reading from John with the wedding at Cana. Today let's settle down and just realise that God is with us in whatever our situation is. Let's come and worship God. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches beyond the clouds. Let's offer our prayer of praise and confession today. Creator God, your love reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your goodness and faithfulness are deep as the ocean and high as the highest peak. With you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Creator God, your love is priceless and precious. We find our true place under the shadow of your wings. You provide for us feasting and drinks from the river of your delights. With you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Creator God, the psalmist sings your glory with poems of joy. We gather now to worship you by ourselves or with people around us. As we celebrate the colours, textures and fragrances, the music and the mystery of the universe where you place us. With you is the fountain of life, in your light we see light. 
accept our worship today. Fill us with your presence. With you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Amen. Listening God, we need to tell you we feel ashamed of the times when we saw need and closed our eyes, of the times when we saw miracles and closed our minds, of the times we heard weeping and closed our ears, of the times we had opportunities and closed our hearts. As you turned water into wine, turn our failures into new opportunities. Turn our closed fists into open hands to bring your love to our neighbours. The Lord's mercy spans the sky and our salvation lightens up the dawn. Seek shelter under the warmth of God's wings for the Lord embraces all life in tender mercy. Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So let's look at today's Bible reading, uh, the wedding of Cana from John chapter 1, verses 1 through to 11. Let's listen to God's word. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 80 to 120 litres. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water, so they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realise where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone who brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed him in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord God, quiet our hearts, make our minds keen to hear your word through my words. In Jesus we pray. Amen. A small boy was asked by a visiting relative, a churchgoer, if he attended Sunday school. When he said he did, he was asked, what are you learning? Last week came the reply, our lesson was about when Jesus went to a wedding and made water into wine. And what do you think you learned from that story? The relative inquired. After thinking for a moment, the lad answered, if you're having a wedding, make sure Jesus is there. Friends, it's a good thing to have Jesus at our wedding ceremonies. Indeed, it is good to have Jesus everywhere that is of significance in our lives. The Gospel today is about how the wine ran out at the wedding in the village of Cana, and how Mary asked Jesus to do something about it, and perhaps somewhat reluctantly, he does. And it ends with these words. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Verse 11. The Gospel of John speaks often about signs and about faith. Signs, as you all know, point to something. For those who want to see and those with eyes to see. They testify to something that is greater than they are. And it is that greater thing we are meant to grasp, not the sign itself. I guess we have all driven down an unfamiliar road and realised we didn't know the speed limit. Sometimes the missing sign, the sign is missing, but 98% of the time it is there and we just didn't see it, we missed it. And now we drive hoping there isn't a speed camera around the next corner. The sign tells us something we need to know. What we need to know is far more important than the sign itself. The first sign that Jesus did points to many things about himself and what he was about, and I would just like to mention a few of them now. A bit of an overview of some of the themes we see in this passage from John. First, Jesus turning water into wine is itself a picture of all that he came to do. Jesus takes what is and shows us that it has the possibility to become something else. What is that which is tired, worn out, devoid of joy, empty and lacking purpose, can be transformed. It can be turned into something rich and fragrant and ripe with the fullness of joy through his presence, through his care. There is a lot of gospel in that for all of us. Jesus can bring new life. He can fill the emptiness in our lives. He can take whatever it, it is that we bring to him, no matter how little or warped or how much, and utterly remake it, giving it a savour, a taste that is beyond the best that we ourselves are capable of providing. For ourselves, for our loved ones, for our church, and even our community. Second point in our overview. John notes that the wine came from the huge 30-gallon urns 
that stood full of water at the front of the house. Vessels that were used by observant Jews to fulfill the rules of ceremonial washing. And even a wedding feast had to honour this ritual of cleansing. Jesus transformed those six huge jars, ponderous symbols of the old way, into precursors of the new. From the water needed to purify under the law came new wine for a whole new era. The time for ritual cleansing had passed, the time for celebration and joy and new life had begun. Third, the Gospel story emphasises the abundance of Jesus' provision of wine. The wedding guests went from having no wine at all to having enough to have a bath in it. Now the age of the Messiah was long expected to be one of abundance, one in which the wine of joy, the cup of salvation, would always be full and overflowing. This miracle is a sign for those who have eyes to see of Jesus' Messiahship. He is the long-awaited deliverer of Israel. He is the one who will purify Israel and all people. And he provides more than is needed. The fourth point in my somewhat inaccurate three-point sermon, the miracle takes place at a wedding feast. Marriage has long been a symbol of the relationship between God and the people of God. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, for example, the prophet tells us that at that time of Israel's restoration and vindication, God will take delight in them and their land. As a young man marries a maiden, it says, so your sons will marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. The fact that the first sign that Jesus did was at a wedding would not be lost on the people. It was their belief that at the time of salvation that God would provide a table of feasting for his servants and a cup that would never run dry. The image is in fact present in that very much loved Psalm, Psalm 23, whose final verses say, You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Fifth point in the even more inaccurate three-point sermon, it is Mary who triggers Jesus' first act of public ministry by saying to him, they have no wine. It was a simple request showing that she trusted that her son would immediately respond and help. Friends, I wonder if we need to learn to trust in Jesus and what he can do. Mary didn't have a clue what Jesus would or could do. In fact, the situation seemed impossible, embarrassing for all around. But Mary trusted Jesus. There are so many situations that seem impossible. State them to Jesus in your prayer. So often we also try to tell God how the problem or issue needs to be solved. In effect, asking God to bless what we've planned and the actions we have made. Why not allow God to come up with a solution? You might just be surprised, just as surprised as the people were on that day at the wedding. That is what faith is about. 
responding to the words of Jesus, trusting that his word will be fulfilled, trusting that as he transformed the water of purification into the wine of joy, so he will transform us and lead us into the kingdom where the best is not only saved for the last, but where the best lasts. May we open our lives anew to God's gift of grace. Friends, in Jesus the best is yet to come. The glory of God is at hand. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. We pray for the world, for those around us, and for ourselves. After the phrase, your kingdom come, if we could all respond out loud or in our hearts, your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Let's pray. Loving God, we bring to you in prayer those whose resources are running out the poor and the hungry. Those tiring in the struggle for justice. Countries burdened by heavy debts. Countries burdened by the issues with COVID. Show us what we should do to help. Call us, change us, use us. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Loving God, we bring to you in prayer those who feel their resources for living running low. The ill and the infirm. the sorrowful and despairing, the stressed and exhausted. Key workers and those who look after others. Show us what we should do to help. Call us, change us, use us. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Loving God, we come to you in prayer to ask for the resources we need for Christian living, for faith and courage. for wisdom and love, for the gifts of your Holy Spirit which will equip us to fulfil our individual callings from you. And if we are struggling or at the end of our tether, help us to rely on you who can change the situation just as you changed water into wine. Call us, change us, use us. Your kingdom come, your will be done. In Christ's name and to your glory we pray. Amen. On a hill that can't be hidden, a shining light. And this shining light is the life of Jesus in us. Oh, what a light, the fire of His Spirit burns. With justice, joy, and peace, and works through our hands and Jesus, do something beautiful, go do something Jesus.
this world Do something beautiful Do something beautiful We are the salt of the earth Here to purify and flavor Souls of the earth Sent through all the earth To love God and love our neighbor Souls of the earth As freely as we receive So freely we must give And we are His hands and feet Jesus, do something beautiful. Go do something, Jesus. Would. Do something beautiful. Let your light so shine before the world that all may see the good you do and give them praise to God our Father. So let's do something beautiful today. And go now with your trust in Christ, who has quenched your thirst with the wine of God's love. Do not be silent about God's faithful love, but shelter in the warmth of God's wings and keep your hearts honest. And may God rejoice over you and call you my delight. May Christ Jesus bring out the best in you to his glory. And may the Spirit equip you with all gifts for the common good. Friends, we go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>